Welcome to Conversations. I'm Muqtadar Khan, your host. And today I'm going to talk to you about a very critical meeting that took place between President Joe Biden and President Xi Jinping of the People's Republic of China in Bali uh, before the beginning of the G20 summit there. But before we talk about this important meeting, uh, please subscribe to Conversations and press the bell icon. Do like the video and also share it with your colleagues and friends if you find the discussion interesting. This meeting is very important because this is the first such meeting since President Joe Biden became president of the United States. China and the United States are the top two economies in the world. The United States is about 23% of the global GDP. China is 18%. So between the two of them, they are 40% of the global economy. So it's very critical for global economic issues, especially given the fact that G20 is a forum to discuss global financial and economic issues that these two uh, powerhouses meet. But uh, we are at a, an inflection point in history. There is this perception that we might be entering a new Cold War between these two countries, uh, that the United States will once again claim to lead the free world, the world of democracies, and China will be designated as the leader of the non-democratic world uh, the authoritarian states. Uh, President Biden keeps echoing uh, this, even though he doesn't talk about it as a Cold War, he talks, it about, talks about it as a competition. Uh, I wish someone would tell him that since 2005 or 2006, the democratic world has been shrinking, and the democracies are in retreat, and authoritarian and populist regimes have been on the rise. So theoretically, if you buy Biden's paradigm, then Joe Biden is the leader of a shrinking world and uh, Xi Jinping is the leader of an expanding world. But keeping aside these uh, world order models, let's focus on what really happened. The meeting lasted for three and a half hours. That clearly suggests that this is not a, a, some kind of a formal a photo op or an attempt to just, you know, get these two leaders together. It was a working meeting and a lot of issues were discussed. So from the press conference that President Biden held afterwards, the readouts uh, given by, uh, by the Chinese government uh, on this issue, uh, these are the five points uh, that I think are critical. Number one, President Biden clearly reiterated that I do not see this as a Cold War. I see this as competition. He emphasized that in certain areas, which is technology, economy, geopolitics, the US and China uh, will compete. Uh, and then there are some critical issues such as climate change and pandemics, uh, challenges which are global and uh, affect everybody. It is critical that these two countries cooperate without the cooperation of China and uh, US, we cannot have global solutions to global problems. So President Biden understands this fully, his national security strategy and this has uh, underscored this need to cooperate even as the two nations compete. And so President Biden made that thing very clear uh, and so did the readouts uh, that yes, we will compete, but we will also try to cooperate because it's critical for the world. The second and important point uh, that came out of this is that uh, uh, the issue of Taiwan was discussed and uh, President Biden subsequently reiterated very clearly that America's one China policy has not changed. It remains the same, that America still feels that it's important for the US uh, to support status quo in the region and the US does not uh, wish to see any unilateral changes to the status quo. So this is not just a, uh, a signal to China saying that our policy has not changed, but it is also a signal to Taiwan uh, to say that, look, our policy has not changed. All the other statements that we have made that we will defend you when you're attacked, et cetera, are basically just to shore up your morale, but that is not a signal for you to declare independence uh, from China and destroy this perception that there is only one China. So this is an important thing. I think this is a concession that, that Biden has made to Xi Jinping, uh, based on what other promises being might have made to, to Biden. So this is an important outcome of this one meeting. Uh, and the third point uh, that it comes out is Biden said that America has emphasized the need to respect the rules 
uh, uh, rule-based order in the international system, basically saying, look, China to not be a revisionist state, do not try to be counter-hegemonic, do not try to change uh, the rules of the global order. Uh, and so, and and at least from the US side, uh, the, the statements that are coming out is that uh, the Chinese understand this, respect this, and they too have affirmed the need for all countries to work uh, uh, in a manner that uh, respects the existing rules. So basically the point is that China is not going to try to upset the global liberal order, but unfortunately the global liberal order itself seems to be weakening. weakening. Uh, and uh, the manner in which the US has responded to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, weaponizing some of the institutions uh, of global cooperation has clearly weakened the system. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, at least at the moment, uh, China is not asserting the need to revise uh, the global order. Uh, and then another important point that has come out from this discussion is that uh, both the countries now very clearly say that uh, Russia's potential or possible use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine is simply unacceptable. In this day and age, nuclear weapons have no role to play. Uh, and so uh, I think uh, from that perspective, uh, this is an example of how both U.S. and China can work together and cooperate to uphold the rule-based system. So this idea uh, of not using nuclear weapons, which is an international norm, uh, and both countries have affirmed that they, they completely oppose any possible use of nuclear weapons by Russia. So that is a, a, a good thing. Uh, so first of all, the fact that these two countries are talking and they are both emphasizing the need to improve communications, establish communications between the two countries and to move forward. They have both agreed to empower lower ranked uh, uh, staffers, assistant secretaries, this and that, defense, et cetera, give them more power to share and communicate with each other and president uh, Biden in a press conference subsequently, immediately after this meeting, also said that he was going to send Blinken back, uh, and I think to China, uh, basically to establish these communications between uh, the two countries. I think these are the five important things that have come out from Biden's meeting with Xi Jinping. One of the things that uh, I'm surprised was not discussed, or if it was discussed, it has not been highlighted in the press conferences afterwards is the need to keep an eye on the global economy. The global economy is doing okay, roughly around 3%, but the inflation and the supply chain disruption, the shortages of food, et cetera, uh, are putting a lot of pressure on developing and emerging markets where even though the economic growth rates are high, uh, there is a possibility, very high possibility that several of these countries could go into recession. Uh, apparently, uh, the reason why the world is not in a recession is because of the U.S. and Chinese economies, which are not in recession. China's growth rate has diminished significantly between 2 and 3%. But the fact that China is still growing makes the whole world grow. China is about 18% of the global uh, economy. But uh, if Europe goes into recession, the Chinese exports to Europe will decline thereby further reducing China's uh, growth and uh, that could put a lot of pressure uh, on, on the global economy. So I was surprised that that was not an important issue. I'm hoping that besides uh, food shortages, fertilizer shortages, uh, fuel shortages, uh, the need to restructure global supply chains, etc., there will be also a discussion of how to combat this inflation that is impacting rest of the world. Part of it is related to the shortages that I just spoke about, uh, but it is important that some kind of a global fiscal policy is articulated, which could, could preempt the possibility of, of a global economic recession. So I hope you found this discussion interesting. We will be keeping an eye on, on the G20 as it goes forward uh, in the next two days, uh, the 15th and 16th of November. And uh, I will definitely provide a summary or a discussion of it at the end of the uh, of the of the summit. Uh, India is going to become the next uh, president, and the next sum summit of G20 will be in India. So we will talk a little bit about that too. So with that, I will take your leave. Uh, 
uh, but not before you subscribe to conversations and ring the bell icon if you have not already done so. So thank you very much for watching conversations. And until next time, this is Mukhtar Khan. Thank you.